and welcome to Space Coast Channel's Brevard and Business Show, covering the highlights of local economic and business events, as well as interviewing with notable movers and shakers, innovators of new developments, and local government officials. I'm your host, Kyle Mullins, and we're sponsored today by the Palm Bay Chamber of Commerce, Ocean Sunglasses, Space Coast Limo, Pizza Vola, and the Wild Manta Learning Center. All right, we're here today with State Representative Debbie Mayfield. Good afternoon, Miss Mayfield. Good How are you doing today? I'm doing awesome. Awesome. Doing awesome. So we're here today to just talk a little bit about um, your candidacy. We're talking about uh, a little bit about your upbringing and what your plans are for, for the district and uh, various other things. So okay. thank you very much for being on the show. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so first off, we'd like to start with, um, could you just tell us a little bit about your background? Sure, sure. Well, um, I was born and raised in Pensacola, Florida, okay. and um, I started to work with Barnett Bank in 1975 okay. after I graduated from high school, and I had a banking career. I started with them in 75, and um, I worked my way up as a receptionist mm -hmm. in that department, all the way up to a senior vice president of residential lending, wow. and, uh, and that's kind of what brought us to the Treasure Coast in 1988. Yeah. So, um, so that was kind of, my, you know, my dad always told us that you could be anything and do anything you wanted to do as long as you worked hard at it. And that's kind of for what I've done my whole life. For yeah. politicians in general and for a state senator uh, in specific, mm -hmm. what, what do you feel are the qualities that, that makes a good politician or senator? Well, you know, you have to have a compassion for people. Mm -hmm. That's to start with. Because that's what you deal with every day. You're dealing with people. Mm -hmm. But you also have to listen to what their needs are and what their concerns are. Mm -hmm. You can't have a preconceived idea of what you want to do. Um, you have your principles that you are grounded on, um, that you always remember, and that's what you go back to when you're in, you're in mm -hmm. concerns or trouble. Uh, but a, a good senator is someone that has, they have ideas, but they also listen to constituents and they go fight for them because that's what you're elected to do. Um, you may agree to disagree on issues and that's fine as long as you are very respectful in the way that you do that and people will respect you for that. Uh, so I think that's really is the qualities of, of, a, of a good senator is, is listening to your people, being respectful, um, agreeing to disagree when you have to, and being accessible. I mean, you want people to be able to approach you. I mean, I have people approach me in, in the, the post office. You know, they'll come up and they want to talk about their issues and, and you have to take time to do it. That's what makes someone a good senator as, as well as um, you know, ideas on how changes need to be made. Very, very interesting. So, in regards, you know, as you said about being accessible and everything like that, what, in terms of the community, what kind of community service uh, are you involved with, and, and what are you involved in that kind of regard? Well, prior to getting into uh, politics, because this is, you know, this is a full-time job, and you're constantly involved in all kind of activities mm -hmm. um, yeah. with nonprofits, just in the role that you have. But uh, in working in, in, in banking, specifically with when I was with Barnett Bank and, and having my own mortgage company, I opened it up in 2001, um, you, it was United Way, it was Junior League, um, it was, uh, those are the type of organizations, early learning centers, you know, those are the type of organizations that I was involved in um, along with Barnett Bank. Yeah. Uh, but as a, as a house member, um, you're constantly involved in that. You may not have a position with the organization, but you're constantly working with constantly them. Whether, working. Yeah, yeah, whether it's, you know, issues that they have uh, with getting, again, going back to getting their license, um, or if it's funding that they're looking for, mm -hmm. um, if it's um, charitable uh, or um, fundraisers that they're doing and they want you to come participate in a fundraiser. So, you know, so those are the sort of things that you're, you know, that uh, as a representative or elected official, you're being pulled at to want to do. And those are the sort of things I, I enjoy because that's you're right. out with the people. Yeah. You understand, you know what's going on in their lives. That's, that's fantastic. And so those are some of the organizations that we've been involved in. Great, great. So. What in particular, you, you know, you talked about your background and everything, what in particular made you interested in running for senator? Well, you know, my, um, my husband um, was a House member and he passed away in 2008 and I ran, that's the year I ran and, and I, I won. And, um, and I've represented my people in Indian River County for the last eight years and, and I love the community. And I love the community up here in Brevard. We recently was, I was recently married in October. Um, my husband has been up here. He's lived here for 30 years. He has a very successful business. 
And, um, and when this seat came available, which was due to redistricting, um, you know, this is the first time that Indian River County will actually be kept whole as one county and it goes up into Ballard County. Okay. So I thought, what a great opportunity. I have my, you know, my, my roots in Indian River County, uh, Ballard County, I had relationships because I had represented part of them as my house seat, mm -hmm. and it was just made, it just made a perfect match uh, of doing it. And I wanted to continue the fight that I've been working on uh, with Common Core, repealing Common Core out of our schools, mm -hmm. um, the Indian River Lagoon issues that we have had, and, and come up with a, um, a long-term um, strategy on how to repair the river, mm -hmm. um, as well as some of the issues that we've had uh, in Indian River County's utility issues. So I wanted to continue the fight that I've had um, that my constituents have asked me to get engaged in, which is the Common Core and, mm -hmm. um, and all of Ward, Florida, and the utility issues and the Indian River Lagoon. Mm -hmm. the, the, those are all very important issues. So that being said, you know, going in, going in for this senator role, looking at your background, what are some of the more major achievements that you accomplished um, in your career? Well, one of the, um, well, just simply working from starting as a receptionist and working your way up to a senior vice president of the Absolutely. largest bank in Florida was was that was an achievement for me. But as as far as a bill would go, I would say it'd have to be the cancer parity bill. Mm -hmm. um, the insurance companies would not. Um, would not um, acknowledge that oral treatment uh, for cancer could be covered under their health care plan where their out-of-pocket was fifty or a hundred dollars, whatever it would be if it was an IV treatment. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Senator Benaquisto and I uh, sponsored the bill. I sponsored on the House, she sponsored on the Senate, and we, we really stood up to the insurance companies and said, no, this isn't right. You know, we, sent, we spend millions and millions of dollars for cancer research, for better ways to treat. Mm -hmm. We have to make the health care available for them to receive Absolutely. the drug now. Mm -hmm. And so we passed that bill and it has really uh, made the difference in a lot of people's lives. That's right. Because they can stay home and take their pill, just like if you were to take a pill for high blood pressure, mm -hmm. uh, without having to go sit in a doctor's office for hours mm -hmm. uh, and getting all the pre-meds and then the drug itself and then yes. you're sick for days oh, because yes. of that. So that was my biggest my biggest um, accomplishment. That all right, so all that being said, you know, with all your experience and your accomplishments and, and all the things that you've achieved so far, what do you believe makes you a better candidate compared to the other ones? Well, I think it's you know it's the honesty and the uh, uh, integrity mm -hmm. of a candidate that you have to look at, and uh, and I think just the the, the fact that I, um, I I go to Tallahassee, I do what I tell my constituents I'm going to do. I listen to what my constituents want me to do. You know, this the people get to Tallahassee and they tend to forget who elects them that sent them to Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. And I think I have a record of of when I get to Tallahassee, I know who elected me and I know what it is that they want me to vote on and what they want me to do when they get there. And I think I have a, a track record that I voted against uh, in-state tuition for illegal aliens. I voted against in-state tuition uh, or for um, um, illegal aliens to be able to be admitted to the Florida Bar. Those were two issues that my constituents felt very strongly about that I voted against. Um, Common Core, I, vote, I filed the bill to repeal Common Core, mm -hmm. and that was another issue that my constituents really felt strong about and wanted me to take a lead on that. Mm -hmm. um, that was a very, very tough thing to do since I was the only Republican uh, that was bringing it up and, uh, and filed the bill on it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think it's the fact that you, you as, as far as what makes me a better candidate is that I do listen to my people. Mm -hmm. I do know who elected me to take me to Tallahassee, and I don't get up there and get full of myself and think I know all the answers. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I think that sets me apart um, from, my, from, my, um, from my opponent. Fantastic. So you, you mentioned Common Core, which that comes up a lot. So for some of your, some of the voters out there who might not be as educated uh, as others on, on the Common important Core. topics, yeah. what, would you, what would you say is uh, what they should know. Like, what, well, what's the what they should know is, is Common Core is not just a set of standards, it is a curriculum mm -hmm. on how teachers are to teach. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that, you know, that, that takes away our Tenth Amendment right. You mm -hmm. know, this was a federal uh, pass down um, for, to the states. And people say it was a governor's initiative, and you have to understand who made that governor initiative up. Mm -hmm. And the Governor's Association is a group of governors as well as business uh, interests that want to shape and help shape the policy of our education. So um, it was passed down through the federal government um, and that was where it's like, look, no, you're, you're, you're violating one, our state rights, mm -hmm. and secondly, not every child learns the same. 
And, and so, so, you know, that's why I want to repeal it out of our schools. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to get back down to the basics in, in our education. We have went way, way too far in testing. And so part of that is, is removing the, uh, all the testing that's in the school, mm -hmm. um, removing the curriculums, and get back to just standards, and let the parents and the teachers decide mm -hmm. what is the curriculum that they need for their child. Mm -hmm. Every school di district is different. From Pensacola to the Keys, every school district is different. And we need to um, put some more accountability back to the elected school board members. And the ones that we elect as school board members should be fighting Tallahassee on things that may, we may be doing that is not in the best interest of the of the children or the teachers. Mm -hmm. So you know that's what parents need to and, and people need to know about Common Core. It is a it is not just standard. It is curriculum. It limits the and, ability to and, actually teach according to each individual child's unique exactly. needs. Exactly. Right. And the teachers are teaching to test because that's we have so many of the tests out there that they have to give it to the, Te to the teaching child. Teaching to test but not teaching to educate. It, exactly. It's, it's, so right. it, it you know it eliminates the, the you know the excitement of kids wanting to wanting to learn. And that's one of the things that you know that, that we need we need to get away with. I was the only Republican uh, that brought that up and uh, and it was there was some political reasons why, um, and now it is it is election year, and you know candidates know it's a hot issue, and other candidates are now trying to say that you know we got to get out of our school. Well, where were you three years ago? You know, mm -hmm. and you said we took it out, but we didn't. We just changed the name just from Common Core to Florida State Standards, uh -huh. and full tried to fool everybody that we got out of it. In reality, we didn't. The teachers knew what we were still in it. The parents knew we were still in it. So that's another thing that separates me also from my opponent is being truthful to your, you know, to your voters and to your constituents as to really what is going on in Tallahassee. I see. And that's something I can tell you you're obviously very passionate about, which is good. Okay, so that being said, talking about the different school districts and, and everything involved with that, what cities and towns um, in general are is your district going to cover? District 17. District. That's, uh, that is the new district, and it's all of Indian River County, and it comes north into Brevard, uh, up to Barnes Boulevard. Um, the Barrier Island is all the way up to Cape Canaveral city limits. Wow. So it's a huge, it's a huge area that we cover. Um, you know, our, 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 our geographics are, are, and our issues are, are very similar um, from Indian River County to Brevard County. Um, so, you know, that, that's why I was really excited about running for this seat. Uh, it is very similar. Um, some of the issues with the lagoon, I mean, we have a, a lagoon that touches on five counties. Uh, you know, you got Volusia County, Bavard County, Indian River County, St. Lucie County, Martin County. Um, and that's one of the reasons that I've also been looking at the Indian River Lagoon Coalition and attending their meetings to come up with a roadmap on how we can uh, best solve our problem with the lagoon. And Dr. DeFries has done a great job uh, in pulling all that together and working on you know, what is the solution. We have all the science as to what the issues are. Septic tanks, runoff, um, you know, wastewater um, um, sewer plants that need to be upgraded. So we know what all the problems demucking. It's a matter of, okay, we'll put the plan together. What does it cost? What's it gonna cost us? Where do we need to start? What needs to be done first? And so, so from that standpoint, we all have those, those, you know, that same type of issues with the lagoon, as well as our education, as well with economic development. Um, so, well, going into that, what are some of the other key points uh, that you're trying to accomplish for the district outside of what you may have already mentioned? Right. Yeah. Well, well, you know, the Indy River Lagoon is the biggest one the that, that I want to, you know, really get us focused on a plan. The Bavard County um, has come up with a ten-year plan in Virginia. Um, uh, Barker, who's done a great job putting that together, and I'd like to take what she has started, and, and they can use that as a model for the other counties to pull together. So the Indian River Lagoon is, is a big issue that we need to resolve. Um, again, the Common Core is, is an issue that we need to get out of our schools um, on it, and then economic development. You know, there's things that we can do, um, and I'll give you an example of, you know, we've had this in our tax package, and, and it keeps getting pulled out of our tax package, and that is to eliminate sales tax on commercial real estate. So if you're renting a commercial building, you have to pay a sales tax on that. That it would be one way of helping all businesses, not just picking winners and losers with what type of tax incentives you give people, but all businesses, if we would eliminate the sales tax across on the across the board on commercial real estate. You know, they're already paying through their rent, which I'm sure the landlord has their tax calculation in there as well. 
So that's just an added tax on top of that business. So that would be one thing that I want to continue to uh, to push to eliminate is that commercial sales tax. We have cut it down over the years, but we just need to get rid of it. It's almost similar to our intangible tax, you know, probably about 16 years ago when we started eliminating the intangible tax. Um, that's the same thing with the, the commercial sales tax. So I'm, I'm hoping that we can continue to work on that and get that through. And, and so that will give some relief to all of us. What them. are some other plans that you have locally to help spur economic growth? Yeah, well, uh, EDC, uh, Linda Weatherman, has done a great job here, as so has Frank Duella with Space Coast Florida. And, uh, you know, what I've spoken to them about is taking a look at all the layers of economic development that goes on. You know, we have an Enterprise Florida. Um, we have the universities that do economic development. So it's kind of a look at all the different layers that will help eliminate the middleman. And the thing that, you know, that we have already spoken about is what is it that we do at a state level that impedes businesses from coming here or expanding their business here. Um, and the other thing we need to look, look for is, uh, you know, is, is our, our trade schools and our technical schools. You know, we need to make sure that we have the workers that the businesses that are already here um, and the ones that would want to come here, that we have a workforce ready for them. So that all goes into the economic development. Sometimes it's not always about the money. It's about the resources and it's about the, uh, the supply chain that they would have here in order to do the type of business that they do. So those are some of the things that you would do um, to help spur the economy is, is, you know, is make sure you have the workforce here, make sure that you're networking with the companies that are already here. Um, and so, and those are some of the things that, you know, that um, Frank Devella and uh, Linda Weatherman do very well working together to bring um, the companies to, to um, Bavard. I see. Sounds great. So, so let's take a little step out from, you know, local politics. Let's talk a little bit more. It's still involved locally very heavily, but let's talk a little bit more international. There's a lot of talk going on, especially here being in Florida, about what we should do in order to, uh, you know, what to consider about trade and our relations with Cuba. Right. What do you think we should do in general uh, to, to help yeah. build that bridge? <laughs> you know, that's a, that's, a, that's a touchy subject, uh, um, and I know that we're open uh, to Cuba now. We have a lot of, 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 of Cuban friends in South Florida that that believe Cuba is still, a, you know, and it is a communist country, and they have a lot of family uh, that they actually fled from Cuba. So it's a lot of heartaches um, going going through the feelings of our Cuban friends that are living in Florida that that really are are don't like the idea of us of us having open trade with Cuba. Um, I think we need to look at it. I think that we have to be very thoughtful. We have to be very careful. Uh, we have to look at all the avenues. We have to make sure that um, the things that we are wanting to do there, whether it's uh, you know the um, airlines going back and forth, which I understand there are, are several airlines that have gotten approval to fly into Cuba. So you know, it, it's, 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 we just need to look at it. We just I don't want us to jump into something um, and then regret later. But uh, because it is a communist country, and yes, we deal with China, which is also a communist country. Um, but um, I, you know, I think it's the, that I'm open to. We just need to be so, careful going forward. So be open-minded but cautious. But cautious, exactly. Okay, that, that I like the way you framed that. Just open-minded. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so again, thank you very much for for coming today. Where where can uh, Brevard's constituency? Where can they look to find more information about where you, where you're going to be your events? Yes. Yeah. Well, they can go to my website. It's debbiemayfield.com is my website. Um, and then we usually have all the updates on there where we're going to be. So just go to debbiemayfield.com and uh, and we also have our contact information on there. So feel free to call or email, which is debbie at debbiemayfield. Dot com and uh, we'll be happy to give uh, give our consent. all right all of us from Space Coast Channel's Brevard and Business Show would like to thank Miss Mayfield for her time and best of luck with uh, with running for senator uh, until next time I'm Kyle Mullins.